wants to sing her teapot song for you guys. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Keep going. And I get all steamed up. You gotta keep talking. You get the best. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing well. You're doing great, baby. I'm Andrew. Yeah, I work at a trucking company, kind of like a manager slash like dispatcher. And I'm Brittany, and I'm a stay-at-home mom. Thank God. This is Dylan. She's four years old. She just had a birthday, huh? Yeah. Can you tell me it was July 10th? July 10th. July 10th. Yeah. yeah. We started her in preschool when she turned three. Um, she really loved it. She loved her teachers. Also, when she was three, she started gymnastics. She was in soccer. So she was just a little go-getter before all this happened, right? I like gymnastics. Yeah, you like gymnastics a lot. You were really good at it, right? Mm -hmm. She was extremely active for a three-year-old, considering she was literally running, jumping, flipping, all those things. Then the last couple sessions, I started kind of noticing a little bit of a difference, a little bit of a different gait in her walk. And she started kind of like limping a little bit. And then I noticed when she would get out of bed, she would, she would say her back hurt and she was kind of limping and it would get a little bit better throughout the day as she woke up. And so I started taking her, I took her to the doctor for it and she, they said growing pains. They said, there's a couple things because I took her three or four times in a week. It made and it I, seem like it was always just, oh, well, it's completely normal, it's, it'll go away. And They made it seem like it's normal for sure, but mother's intuition. And so we went down to the hospital and got blood work and when the blood work came back, they said turn around and come back down to the hospital. So it was like a long night. It was, we got to the emergency room and then, and then his first thought was to get oncology involved. Well, oncology, to get a CT scan. CT scan. I'll never forget that. The CT scan, they would only let one parent go down with her. So I was by myself. I went down with her, they put her under, and I was in this little room by myself. And her main nurse came and said, I just want to give you a heads up, we see a mass. and not having him there with me was extremely difficult to the point where they, they got Renee and they had Renee bring him down to me and she came and told us it was stage four and that was just devastating. Um, but it's just so crazy because like I said, she was doing gymnastics literally a week and a half before that. A finger poke. That's you go to the lab when you get your finger poke. But if you have to get your port accessed, then you go to the clinic or the doctor's office. Yeah. Yeah, or you have guys. <laughs> you have guys. You're so funny. I love you. We got the diagnosis on November 18th right before Thanksgiving. And then she was impatient. Yeah, she was impatient for almost three weeks for her first round. And then the way that her treatment worked, it was she would be in for a week, off for three weeks, in for a week, off for three weeks. And she did that six times. We went into transplant, we were all ready for it and her last scan showed that her Curie score was not as low as they wanted it to be going into transplant. So, but she started at a 24. In the beginning, she went down to a 14 after her chemo, and they wanted her to be at a two, or a one or a two going into transplant. So it's at that point that we had to switch gears, which is, devastating for parents to hear that it might not be going in as positive a direction as you thought it was. Yeah, so, so. I mean, and the surgery went really well. 
they got all of the large mass out. Um, but since that number was a lot higher than they really wanted, they thought it'd be more effective to do a, another chemo with immunotherapy added into it. Um, so thankfully that score went from 14 and after three rounds, it's now down to a four. So they said, they said, we recommend you getting a G-tube put in when they go in to remove the mass. They said, come transplant time, that will be much easier for you guys. She won't have to swallow all her meds and everything. So we went ahead and did that and it has, it's been an absolute blessing because she's gained all of her weight back. She doesn't have to eat all the medicine or drink all the medicine. She hates taking all the medicine. So we can just put that in her G-tube now. There's a couple different drugs, I believe, that they give her that affects her high pitch hearing loss. And so throughout chemo, we've been, she's been having um, hearing tests and it's always been fine. And then the last one we went to, she just dropped very quickly and it was a complete surprise to us. So she's got hearing aids now. I do know that she has no idea how serious her situation is. She's just living her life and when she feels good, she feels good and I, I think it um, bothers her when she can't do everything that other kids are able to do. She doesn't understand why she can't go back to school. She doesn't understand that that people have to wear masks when they, you know what I mean? She That bothers her, I think. but. Thankfully, our family's been super supportive, great. So it was, you know, this is what stuff we need to handle at home because we're not gonna be home for a little bit. I mean, we got somebody's gonna wash the dog and it was kind of just go and, and get it done. And then, and then when you finally kind of sit back and everything's kind of caught up and you think about it, it's, it's hard. Oh shit, but, yeah. this is happening. <laughs> but it was, I mean, I think both of us were just kind of like, all right, Game plans. You just go through the motions for a really long time until it hits you when you're alone. Yeah. Well, that's you know, and we've always you know worked as a great team. We know when one of us needs to step in, and I, I don't want us to mope around, especially when she has all this energy like this and wants to yeah. play. And there's no need for I mean, play with her, enjoy it. But sometimes it it's really sucks, and sometimes we each need a moment to just process yeah get it out okay so we got two more rounds of this um chemo you know, chemo, chemo. chemo. We'll what chemo treatment transplant. Oh, treatment, so treatment for your fireworks two rounds yeah and i think two it's rounds. about 20 two. to 30 days or something. Wow. Um, and um and then after that it will be radiation and then from there I think I think they'll go back to immunotherapy again but so we're um, still like barely halfway through this and I feel like we've been going forever <laughs> yeah we were initially told 18 months would be her treatment plan so now we're looking probably closer to 24 26 months right yeah yeah Children's has been phenomenal. The doctors, Renee, Renee has been incredible. Um, all of the resources that they provided for us, they all know her by name. We got really lucky because we're so close that like I feel, we feel so safe that if something were to happen, we're not that far away. But also at the same time that, you know, what they provide her and comfort and making sure that, you know, it's just another normal day, even though for us, or, you know, um, it's just been, you know, twice as wonderful. And she does, she has friends down there. I wanna go see Miss Renee, I wanna go see Miss Teresa. And, you know, they put special, they put, um, put special toys aside for her, for when she comes. So we do, it's been really great. We definitely feel like a name and not a number when we're at Akron. I think the initial part that drew us to your charity was um, the transparency of funding because you don't see anything like that and it's wonderful. 
to know exactly where every penny of your money is going. Lindsay was such a big help. For, Lindsay, definitely. For her and us, and there's times you go through it and you're kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know where we're going next. And um, I know Lindsay was a great resource. She's been a wonderful resource for sure. Um, and, and friend. Then, <laughs> yeah, and like, and just seeing, and Dylan seeing Mila do, I, I just remember like with her G-tube and pushing medicine in, Dylan wants to push it in like Mila does, and it made it seem a little more normal and she wasn't out of place, so. I would say my biggest goal or objective is for Dylan's video to be like Mila's video was for her, because she watched your video and she saw a little girl that looked like her and that it was okay and she's thriving and so I want to give that to another family that it's going to be okay. Seems like a pretty tough cookie. She handles it really, really well. She is a really tough, tough cookie Are you for tough? sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I want to cut. <laughs> that that part would probably have to be cut a little bit so it wouldn't get in your eyes, but that can be done. Can I almost call you a mirror? Yeah. <laughs> can I almost call you a mirror? I love getting my hair cut. Oh, wow. That looks just like me. Oh, oh, oh. Now you look like Cousin Ed, silly girl. Cut me, Ned. <laughs> <laughs>